Hey, welcome to another episode of uh, It Resolves. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Welcome back. Thank you for tuning in, listening, or watching, doing it however you're doing it, where you're doing it. Gosh. Yeah, I got distracted by <laughs> Kevin's mug. Because it, it... So, I, I'll explain this because... I have no backstory. So, it's this fine. was a gift, a Christmas gift nonetheless, from my lovely girlfriend Monica, who got it... And it says, I like warm hugs, right? That was the initial thing. Uh, but if you'll notice, the little part of the H came off, so it says, I like warm nugs. <laughs> Guys, you should uh, check out our Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even read it. My brain was just like, he says, warm hugs. That's all that. No, it says warm nugs now. Like, from... Just Guys, you should check out our Patreon. We have sweet pledge goals, and we would really appreciate it. Uh, we don't use it a lot, um, but it's there. I don't know how to move on from that now. <laughs> Guys, we were talking about uh, something interesting today. Uh, that we for, actually, once. <laughs> for once. For once. Um, we are going to start off with our, our card of the day. Ah. Then we're going to go into a sort of deck tech. I know Ish. we already do deck techs. This is a different kind of thing. Just trust me. It's going to be great, because Will wrote it. Then, we're going to go into the question of the week, uh, and then we're going to have our Cracker Packs, sponsored yeah. by Grand Slam. Yeah. Bunch so, of fun stuff. Let's go right into the random card of the day. Oh, we didn't actually mention something. You'll notice... Oh, right. The window. This is a thing. That's so, the outside. I know a lot of Magic players aren't used to seeing it, <laughs> but that's not actually for green mana. It's just a tree. Yeah. Um, it makes uh, oxygen for which to breathe for. <laughs> so um, If you're wondering yeah. why this is here, basically, um, well, you've already heard us talk about both of us are moving soon. Um, yeah! So we're in the process of that, which means the normal area, which we usually use to film this, is occupied with things. Yes. Uh, which means we had to move here, which actually is okay because it's more it's picturesque. Kind of nice. Um, also, it? assuming everything goes correctly... Uh, we're going to try and keep a similar setup to this in the future, but we will see. We don't know about that yet. Right. Way to leave them tantalized. Yeah. Wanting more. And then if it doesn't work, we're going to fail real hard. It's gonna we'll just great. put up a picture of a tree. Just uh, one lonely tree. <laughs> that's just our that, tree. They that resolves you painted tree. or something? I, w like... I would love to paint a tree <laughs> for our set. On that note, <laughs> random card of the day in three, two, one. Oh. This is an. I mean, it's an interesting card. Go ahead. Sure. So Niv Mizzet, the Fire Mind, uh, the legendary Dragon Wizard from Ravnica. You know him well. Uh, he is a four four for six, two colorless, two blue, two red. Flying. Whenever you draw a card, Niv Mizzet, the Fire Mind, deals one damage to target creature or player. You can tap him to draw a card. Where is this playable, Will? Commander. Mm. I think Commander. I also think Limited. I mean, it's good in a red. Oh, well, uh, I card. mean. Um, I mean, it's a bomb, I think. Her? It's harder to cast, but it's not, like, it's six. Like, That's six the is normal. Yeah, but... W you know what I mean? It is very hard to cast, though, with with limited fixing. Um, at a 4-4 four, four for six, but flying, that's okay, that's fine. Yeah. I, I mean, that's a pretty good bomb. Um, I don't honestly know if he's powerful enough. I will say this, thinking about it in context as well... There were bounce lands that produced two colors of mana in this set and mm. guild packed when it came out and everything. Sure, 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 sure. sure. So I think that because it was Ravnica's two colors, that yeah. was the theme. So fixing, I think, in that that environment, I think would have been okay. It, it would have been better than normal at the very least. You could say that. You can make an argument for that. I just don't know that he comes in and does enough to be like your win con in limited. Yeah. Um, but this card does tie into some combos in Commander. Yeah, um, he's definitely. used it a few, uh, uh, like this weird Commander Stormy decks. I say Storm, but they're not exactly. Yeah, they're you know weird. Um, they're really fun though. I'm trying to remember the Commander that my buddy has that wins him. He's a little Goblin. New Mizzic. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, that one. He's like the combo, yep. the blue red combo deck is always Niv Mizzix. So, like, that's the one. <laughs> not always, but like, that's the no, most popular. Pretty much always. Pretty much. <laughs> pretty much um, always. So, yeah, I mean, he definitely has some use in decks like that in Commander. Mm -hmm. um, I would say in Limited, depending on the environment, I would take yeah. it. 
Um, but I think you can. I think you can. I think it's fine. I don't think it's unreasonable to. I no. think he's pretty good. I mean, yeah, he's harder to cast, but like at six, yeah, I mean, it's fine. I, it's okay. I would I hope for a little better. I I don't love it, just because I don't. Again, card advantage in limited. I don't really care that much. Um. Yes, but it's card advantage on With, a stick. On a stick with a damage, with a yeah. ping effect. So, I, I mean, mean, that matters. Yeah, but now I'm using my 4-4 <laughs> four, four body. All he does is tap, do a damage, and draw me a card. I don't know. You but know it's what I'm worth noting any time you would draw a card, not just off of his effect. So even at the start of your turn and things like that, oh, you'll be true. able to ping that stuff. That is true. That so, is true. like, you'll get more than just the damage off of okay. his draw. Effect. Okay, I think yeah. it's worth it. So that's, like, two a turn. Yeah, theoretically. I'm kind of cool it's with good. that. I'm kind of cool with that. I think it's good. All right. I not approve. amazing, but good. You approve. <laughs> it's not enough to put card draw in your deck for limited, by the way. Don't do that. No. No, no, no. no. I mean, card draw, some card draw is fine, but like you don't want it overboard. Like a divination. I'll take a divination. That's good. Yeah. Maybe, it's in Dominaria right now. Maybe one. Yeah. you would. Card draw is a trap in limited. We've talked about yes, it. Yes. It is usually a trap. Yeah. Bread. Bread, dude. Bread. Bread and uh, cabs. <laughs> All those different theories. <laughs> Bread cabs. Uh, yeah. Alright, five color <laughs> humans, let's talk about that. <laughs> uh, I could talk forever about limited, it's so... Funky. <laughs> funky and fun. Um, so, five color humans, we were talking about this today because when we were brainstorming, um, a topic, uh, d- d- uh, main point, whatever you want to call it, for this episode, um, we've been in Dominaria a lot recently, yep. and that's great, but we haven't touched modern in a while, and there are some changes, shakeups happening to modern, Albeit they happened, they really started a few months ago, and it's not going to really surprise anyone, I don't think. No, I don't think so. That being said, we do have some new decks kind of just coming up to the forefront. Um, And they're kind of fun. They're kind of exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, Five Color Humans is probably my favorite of the two. Um, Is the other Hollow One? Yes, the other Hollow One. We Um, did a deck tech on Hollow One. You should go watch that. Shameless plug. Um, Hollow One's a sweet deck. But yeah. it's high variance, which humans right. is not. <laughs> right. right. Um, Thank you, Aether Vile. <laughs> yes. Uh, so mm. I'm going to very quickly touch about Hollow One. Yeah, do it. I love that deck. It's really cool. It's right? a fun deck. Yeah. A um, lot of graveyard interaction with Flame Wake Phoenix as well as Bloodgast. Mm-hmm. Um, so basically, the idea is you draw a bunch of cards, discard a bunch of cards, and then play free Hollow Ones. It's yep. the idea. Um, but because you're relying on certain cards, it's high variance. So sometimes. And this has been done on stream somewhere. I don't. I think it was Gabriel Nassif that mm-hmm. did this. He played like four hollow ones on turn one. I might be. It might have been like two or three, but I'm pretty sure it was all four because otherwise it wouldn't have been as big of a deal. Um, oh. It was sweet. It's so cool that that can happen. I just got however, like, a, like an ASMR tingle. <laughs> <me right> now. <laughs> um, however, that's not the norm, right? Like generally, it's. Hopefully you get one, maybe you get two. If you get two, you're feeling pretty good, but... Oh, um, God, yeah. That's it's eight not, power on board, man. It's very easily likely that you get absolutely none, you know what I mean? Oh, so, like, yeah. it's it's one of those kinds of decks. Right. It, it's sort of like Dredge in that it can win immediately, or it can just lose. Like, it can flop completely. Um, sure. I think it... Sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's fair to say. Um, but it is very fun. If you yeah. like rolling the dice and just kind of seeing what you go with, you know... It's worth it. I it's a fun it's day. I would say try Definitely. it for sure. Definitely. Um, okay. Um, so yes, Hollow One is the the other kind of new kid on the block. Um, <laughs> humans, though, from Magic Aids. Not a lot of people give that channel credit. Uh, they should. Yes. Are you not sort of? Uh, I mean, no. I definitely am because the list that that Magic Aids made hasn't changed mm. tremendously. Yeah. People have tried playing with Dark Confidant um, instead of, uh, like, Mayor of Aberbrook, mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Um, but I think that those decks don't do as well. Yeah. Just because, and we'll talk about it, but the long and short of it is Five Color Humans is a deck that doesn't need to outvalue, necessarily. Right. Its, its game plan is Disruption, and quick damage mm-hmm. just to stay ahead all the time um, and not let you play things, really. It's kind of getting ahead and staying ahead no matter what right. is the idea. If yeah. you get behind, it's really hard generally to dig back out, I would say. But there is a lot of disruptive elements that can right. put you back right. as long I as would, you have them. Yeah, I kind of don't think that's... 
that's necessarily a problem. Yeah. Um, you see things like reflector mage, meddling mage, stuff mm -hmm. like that being able to uh, keep your opponents off their plays. Um, and reflector mage is a great cost effective way to always combat something on board. Yeah. Because you can just bounce it. You don't have to worry about it for a turn. It's great. Um, so let's talk about uh, the list for a little bit. Um, and this, there are min minor changes, okay. I think, across lists here and there. Um, but this is, for the most part, the, the original one that came out. Um, so <coughs> Champion of the Parish, we've mentioned before. Um, you are 1-1 one, one human from Innistrad <laughs> who gets bigger when humans show up. He's a beater. Yeah. Right? He's there he's to, the beater. <laughs> basically, just to, uh, <laughs> to add a threat pretty much at any point in the mm -hmm. game. Um, like we we did a card spotlight pack. We did those. We did. Uh, <laughs> and, um, I forgot we did that. That's funny. But yeah, those were fun. Yeah. Um, but yeah, an unanswered <laughs> champion just goes, just becomes a threat that is out of bolt range. Always in push range. But that's, that's the hard part. Fatal push. Right. It's a lot. We'll talk about that. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, uh, so four champion of the parish, full play set. You always want those. Four noble hierarch, naturally. Yeah. Um, noble hierarch is one of <laughs> a card that so desperately needs a reprint. Oh my goodness, yes. Just so desperately. Maybe we'll get it in battle bond. <laughs> one can hope. Like I mean, hey, that'd be one. That's our shot. Um, it probably won't happen, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> but of course, uh, noble hierarch. The um, <laughs> oh, what is that? Exalted. Yes, but the color name. The color oh, uh, Bant. Bant, thank you. The Bant Dork. I, yeah. I'll call her. I mean, she makes, you know, the Bant colors. Um, <laughs> which is perfect for this deck. Uh, four of Kite Sail Freebooter. Again, so this deck exists. It's th It thrives from throwing your opponent off of your uh, their game. Mm. Um, so with it running really no spells other than humans, uh, Kite Sail Freebooter acts as your uh, hand destruction and information, which in... Formats like modern, like vintage, etc., are it, it, that's just vitally important. It's so key. I mean, to be able to pick the mm -hmm. most problematic card out of your opponent's hand, and not only that, but the information that you gain from seeing the opponent's hand, mm -hmm. you get to sculpt your next few turns around right. that information. So right. it's just huge. Right. So it is a, a non-creature, non-land card, mm -hmm. um, which kind of works to the biggest strength of the deck in that this deck uh, fights so well against other creature decks. Like Death Shadow, like Hollow One, decks like that. Um, that if you're playing like an Ad Nauseam or what have you, then this card, yeah. Kite Sail Freebooter, just comes in and takes them off their combo, which is, is fantastic. Perfect. Um, for Meddling Mage, I mean, this is a historic <laughs> card for Magic. Yeah. It's a wonderful card. Uh, comes into play, name a non land card. That card cannot be played. Is this card Chris Bakula? Yes. Okay, that's this what I Chris thought Bacula. it was. Um, if you don't know who that is, you're missing out. Do some homework. Do some homework. He's a he's a good dude. What a we hang? No, we don't. We don't hang. <laughs> I wish. That'd I be, wish that'd be really cool. He seems like a genuinely nice dude, and yeah. he has done a lot for the game of Magic. If you don't know, definitely. Um, but he leads a, leads a busy life. He does lead a busy life. So got a family. Yeah, that's kind of important. Um, <laughs> so Manly Mage comes into play. Name a long line card. Can't play that card. Uh, this works against anything. That's yeah, not a land. Uh, it is your catch all. <laughs> it's your answer for for whatever. Yeah, um, this deck already sounds a lot like a control deck, but keep in mind that is not what it's going for. It is disruption to every point on your curve. Um, uh, yeah, that phantasmal image, a four of phantasmal image. So not a human in and of itself, but that's fine. It will come in as a copy of mm -hmm. a creature. So essentially, you get four more of anything else that you would need. Yep. Do you need another metal image? You got it. Do you need another noble hierarch? For some reason, you got um, that extra exalted trigger. Mm, I mean, I guess. <laughs> Wee. But Woo. regardless, <laughs> regardless, uh, it, it that's kind of your toolbox creature in this. Yeah. In that, if you have a creature on board, you need another of. It'd be nice to have. Well, there you go, sold. Or if you want to copy their scary thing, maybe. I mean, it's yeah. it's versatile. Yeah, so yeah. there's that. Um, Phantasmal image is a great little include. Um, Thalia's lieutenant. This is another card that just pumps your team, pumps itself. Um, it's it's great. It's just value. Yeah. It's value for everybody. Absolutely. As a one one for two. Uh, not a ton to say about that. Uh, Thalia, Guardian of Thraven. Yes. So, classic card, right? And as a human, yeah, it's just kind of 
It helps so much in this deck. <laughs> it um, slows down all the other like control decks, combo decks, all that stuff. It just makes it a lot harder to lose to them on game one. Yes, which is so crucial. Yeah. I th the first round of any tournament, you don't have deck lists. It's just kind of a frenzy. Yeah. Um, so Thalia is fantastic day one. Like Thalia main board. And correct me if I'm wrong, board. but it really doesn't hit anything in this deck, right? Against like right. it doesn't hurt right. itself in non-creature any way. spells. Um, because Possibly I more. do. There is a list, a variant of this list Except that doesn't run Aether Vial. Right. It runs Collected Company. Right. And I don't know what that deck list looks like specifically, so I don't know if it runs these Salias or mm -hmm. not. But um, I would imagine yeah. that would be problematic. This isn't the <laughs> this isn't the uh, Collected Company yeah, version yeah. of it. Uh, I don't think that deck need. I don't think this deck needs Collected Company. I don't think so either. Um, um, I know there's been some banter back and forth on which is better. So. We'll put a pin in that. We'll come yeah, back to okay. it. We can talk about it. Because um, I think that is an interesting point, right? Yeah. Collecting Company, for one point in time, I considered to be a little too good. Um, I don't know that that's necessarily an issue now. Yeah. I be, don't think it is. No. No. Be that as it may. It's, it, it bears conversation. Sure. Um, but Thali is fantastic. Doesn't really hit any of your cards except for Aether Vial. Um, which isn't a huge concern because you usually stick an Aether Vial before you stick mm -hmm. your Thalia. Awesome. Um, and it just fights well against any other creature, right? It's a 2-1 with first strike. Yeah, it's Sweet. great. Um, so there's a 1 of Kessig Malcontents. This is kind of your late game bomb, your, um, you need to close out the game, maybe, maybe damage in combat isn't doing the trick. Uh, Kessig Malcontents is just kind of like your, um, your Gary from Theros, your great <laughs> merchant. Uh, comes in, deals damage based on the amount of humans you have. Um, uh, seems good in this yeah, deck. Yeah, <laughs> it's fantastic. It's just, it's just over, Yeah. You know, I didn't Overreach. actually know that that card existed. That's awesome. Yeah, it's great. That's cool. Um, as a, I generally don't like one ofs. I think in this situation, it's awesome <laughs> because your your first strategy is always to win. Yeah. Through combat, but if that, you know, gets you out of that board, so right, right, exactly. So, yeah. and it can just kind of just take it out of nowhere. Yeah. Which is cool. Uh, four of Mantis Rider, and Love this, this is the top of the curve here. Three is as high <laughs> as we'll go, which is absurd for a modern deck, yeah. but it just works so well. Um, and this is going to be your hardest card to cast because it is um, uh, the three colors. It's America. Just kind of America. America. It's America. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, three, three with flying, vigilance, and haste. It's just a well-rounded so card, good. right? That's yeah. a lot of value on one on one guy. Um, Kev, what's it die to? Uh, bolt. That's the hard part. But here's a cool thing. Um, there's enough <laughs> support in this deck yeah. to give it counters that you don't really have to worry about bolt. Bolt is still good against this deck for like turn one, turn two. Mm -hmm. After that, Bolt gets way worse. Yes. Now, push doesn't really. Push yeah, is push always... Yeah, push kind of is always good. <laughs> definitely. And then we talked about it a lot, and I think this is really... To me, this is kind of the card that gives this deck so much punch. It's Reflector Mage. Reflector Mage is so good, dude. It really is. Um, kind of absurdly so. Yeah. So just to remind everyone, when Reflector Mage enters the battlefield, return target creature and opponent controls to its owner's hand. That creature, that creature's owner can't cast spells with the same name as that creature until your next turn. So that, you have, <laughs> <laughs> you've protected yourself against any Delver. Yeah. Because after they've delved out Gromag Angler, you just reflect it back and they can't cast it <laughs> and they have just delved for it. Yeah. So... They really took a hit on that one. Oh yeah, that's big. Um, Death Shadow, same vein. Yeah. Um, any Eldrazi, same vein. Yeah. And you don't have any of those obnoxious. If if an instant or sorcery targets this Eldrazi, counter it. And let's say that <laughs> if when this Eldrazi dies, do this. Th nah, you just bounce it and they yep. can't cast it again. Um, this is such a big tempo swing that mm -hmm. can kind of give you a turn of who. Yeah, that is so necessary when you're up against a deck that can outvalue you because none of these cards on their own are very powerful. Yeah, right. It's that's fair. It's just small chippy punches against your opponent's game plan that gets you there. Yeah. Um, but Reflector Mage to me is really the the creme de la creme, <laughs> the cherry on top, <laughs> the. Uh, it's, <laughs> it's marvelous. Um, it gets you such a big advantage in modern. Yeah, it really does. Um, modern's like the, yeah, it's probably like the only place. It's not a standard anymore, yeah. but you, don't, you wouldn't play anywhere else. No, um, no. I don't think. I might be wrong, but I don't think I so. don't think you do. Um, so then, the only non-creature spells in this deck for Aether Vial. Uh, so, 
you could talk at length about how good <laughs> Aetherbile is. Um, one of the biggest issues... Uh, I'm back. <laughs> one, of, one of the biggest issues uh, you would talk about with, with this deck is not being able to get enough of these cards on board. Yeah. Aether Vial, of course, fixes all that. Yeah. You slap it down and you just you start violating every turn, throwing, <laughs> throwing humans out there. I don't need to explain Aether Vial. It, I hope. Yeah. Would you I, say? It makes perfect sense. The only downside to an Aether Vial is when you draw it late game. That's the only downside, right? Sure, sure. And, like, that... It's worth the... the Your phone is distracting. I know, um, sorry. <laughs> it's worth running a four of, because even if you if you draw it in the early game, it basically makes everything you, you control uncounterable, meaning any control deck is just going to kind of lose at some point. Like, they just kind of have to. Um, not have to, but it makes it a lot harder for them to actually win. Yeah, absolutely. Because um, um, you have no way to really... I mean, stop the counter unless yeah, yeah. you separate the file. Exactly. Right, which is fantastic. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, Kev, what are some other decks that really... Sorry. So sorry. <laughs> I'm married, too, so... <laughs> I'm not. Every now and then, I need to uh, to answer that. Um, <laughs> um, Kev, what are... Off the top of your head, what do you think are some weaknesses to five-color humans that... So, board sweepers... Not? I think would be terrible um, for this deck because especially something like Anger of the Gods where they exile everything and Anger is actually really good because it matches up so well against most of the creatures. Um, that would be like the worst case scenario in my mind. You don't, <laughs> you don't want to, <laughs> you don't want to run into a sweeper. That's yeah. In my mind, that would be the worst case scenario. Absolutely. Um, you have no real way to stop that. Right. Um, so, and that totally takes you off your game plan. Exactly. Um, and it's, I would imagine, because this is a deck where you're kind of, for the most part, except like maybe a well-timed uh, Reflector Mage or Meddling Mage, um, for the most part, you're kind of just playing stuff out, Yeah. in my mind. And so, like, you're not going to have much of a hand most of the time to rebuild after a Sweeper. At least I don't. Right, think. right. You don't, I mean, all these cards listed, you don't have card draw. Right. Right. Exactly. Um, that's difficult. It is, um, and especially for a modern deck, yeah. um, you there there is no way to gain card advantage, which is why a lot of decks have started running Dark Confidant. Yes, yeah. it still works flavor wise, and it's <laughs> for that tribal theme, it'll still get bigger and all that stuff, mm -hmm. um, which is fine. But the question becomes, what are you taking out for Dark Confidant? For this, right. I think you could argue Phantasmal Image, same mana cost. Yeah. However. Um, Having the option to always have another whatever is kind of nice. To that me. toolbox is just so useful. I do like having my plan Bs. Yeah. Um, as you know, uh, this also I should mention does run um, Horizon Canopy, so it does have that card draw. <laughs> you can draw one card. Yeah. There you, you go. Is it a four of? Uh, it is. Okay. You can draw four total cards of this deck. <laughs> Woo! I was I I lied. <laughs> That's nice. That's yeah, never gonna. That's probably never gonna get you out there of that. You go. It's but it, probably never. <laughs> but it is nice to have that option. Sure. Um, of course. So sideboards, I don't love going into normally, just because that you got to tailor it really to what you you're really expecting. You really have to tailor it. Yeah. Um, I do think uh, sort of an interesting. Where did it go? Uh, sideboard tech card is Sin Collector. Oh yeah, um, I like Sin Collector. Sin Collector's cool. It still works on theme. It's it's kind of another kite sail free booter in that it comes yeah. in and takes some stuff, um, but just not quite good enough to hit main board. Uh, is it Staticaster oh, to go this. against the mirror and then other tricky? Um, is this the one that deals one damage? To yeah. Okay, so it's like trickery on a stick. Well, no. Is it not? No, it's one creature and then every other creature. Oh, uh, same. Thing. Okay, never mind. So, I got excited. You, I got really excited. You rascal. <laughs> um, and then some Dismember in the sideboard, because Dismember is such good removal, because you can cast it with any colors. You don't yep. need to worry about uh, whatever. Um, do you remember, Kevin, by the way? Probably not. Okay. Um, the, the the card of the day, uh, Ancient Ziggurat, that we got, that we yes. were like, why is this $3? We don't know where this is played ever. Yes. Maybe a weird modern deck. This is that weird modern deck. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. um, four of, if I'm not... Oh, sorry. This one has a one of Ancient Ziggurat. 
Um, just because they can only cast creature spells. Yeah. But I mean, really, that's kind of all you've got for the most um, part. Yes, but yeah. this is this is that this is that deck. This is that deck, which is I'm fine, fine with that. Um, so, like we said, some weaknesses for five color humans. Uh, Fatal push hits everybody, the whole <laughs> squad, just the entire team, pretty much. Um, which is tough. So there's always really going to be efficient removal against you in that right. realm. Um, and yeah, sweepers, no card draw. So those are the big drawbacks. Why is it doing so well? Because well, it's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. Uh, it it just disrupts so consistently yeah. that there's really no way to uh, to I think over. Well, and you look at the it. deck list and. Every card aside from Aether Vial is a disruptive creature or mm -hmm. a creature that's going to punch through for damage. So it's like you very rarely have dead draws. Very true. You know what I mean? Like, I'd I say. mean, it's hard to rebuild, yes, because you only draw one card per turn, but in a situation where you're ahead, it's really hard to kind of get behind because you're not really going to have a dead draw unless you draw a land or a late game Aether Vial. But right. this deck, if I'm not mistaken, is low on lands, correct? It's 19 lands. 19, which is a little bit low. It's not crazy. Um, it's not sh shadow, uh, death shadow territory at like 17 or whatever. But um, I mean, it's, it's still low. pretty close. To me, yeah. that's still that's still pretty close. It's pretty close. And so, like, it's really hard to have a dead draw with this deck, which I think is yeah. awesome. I, I mean, I'd say Noble Hierarch play game is kind of dead, uh, but yeah, even but, so... Um, human count, I guess. It exactly, and, and it. I guess if you have a champion out, it would pump it up. You know, it does that kind of thing. But sure, sure, um, sure, sure. It's. I don't know. It's just such a sweet deck. It's so interactive, and mm -hmm. out of a creature deck, you normally don't expect that. Right. Yeah. And that's what I think makes it so unique. Because I mean, mostly creature decks is like, hey, I'm just gonna bash in, right? Like that's all you do. This. <laughs> I could bash in, or I could make it so you can't play things, or you know, like it's. Right. It's just cool. I like it a lot. Yeah, five color humans is very is very strong. Um, here's a question. Okay. Um, do you think five color humans is getting to the point where it's taking over modern? I do not. Okay. Um, so. Based on meta percentage that we have out there, it's only about 9% of the meta. Okay. Really. Um, the reason I ask mm. uh, specifically, and I think I mentioned this in the last uh, weekly ramble, um, but the last GP, I believe, mm -hmm. had four humans That's correct. in the yep. top eight, uh, and yep. I think won it. Two at, two at the very bottom, two at the very top. Two at the very top. Yes. <laughs> uh, and then the one before that, I believe, had two or three as well, and I it two. might have won it two. there. I'm not sure. Um, it depends which event. It did lose out at an yeah, event. I think you're right. But there was one, which one before the last one that mm -hmm. it also won. I'm just putting it out there because right. some people are kind of, it seems like, at least talking about it a little bit. Um, but I don't think it's to the point where it's taking over yet. No, I don't think so. Um, I mean, there are a lot of... like Blue-white control does a pretty decent job against this deck. Yeah. Um, with it being able to answer just... <clears throat> Supreme Verdict. Me. Right. It can answer everything, really. Yeah, yeah. Eventually, in some capacity, it will have an answer for stuff. And also, for the most part, like the flyers in this deck, Mantis Rider, right? Like three, three. Mantis Rider, Kite Sail. And Kite Sail. Uh, Celestial Colonnade outpowers mm -hmm. both of those. Right. And so, like, it's... I mean, yes, you can argue with Thalia's Lieutenant, you can pump him up and stuff, but, like, but without again, any setup... The colonnade just runs right over. You know what I mean, right? And so I think, yet yeah, like you said, I just think blue white is a good matchup, really. But right, yeah, it, it needs to blue white's advantage. Blue white, sorry, America's advantage. Uh, <laughs> the America controls advantage is uh, if it can start answering early, it doesn't want to play on the back foot. Yeah. If it starts to stick cards that that pump, its lightning helix says its bolts get a lot worse. Um, if it can't. It will probably never counter Aether Vial no, first. No, probably That's not. really difficult to do. Um, there's, I mean, there's honestly no way, really. Vapor Snag, if it goes first, I guess, right? Not Vapor Snag. No. Um, it's the counter target. It's not... Um, Missed up. Right. It's the... Um, I was going to say, that's not legal. So. <laughs> right, right. It's the It's the one blue counter target. Spell Snare? That's, that's two converted mana cost though you're right though so that doesn't work oh, um, true debt, true it would debt, have to down, be down, like down, down. the control deck on the play and yeah. they have either like a mana leak or something like that and they the humans deck has to play it on turn two <laughs> like it's like the say, weirdest situation yeah. that doesn't really it work, doesn't work. 
Um, huh. So very rarely are they going to actually be able to counter the Aether Vial. For yeah, sure. that's very true. Um, but the sweepers, that's where the control decks have yeah. it because, like Supreme Verdict, yeah. you can't do anything about that. You know what I mean? Like it's going to happen. Yeah, that's um, very true. I will say there are some decks that run Selfless Spirit um, that mm-hmm. I've seen yep. to give it's your in, team. It's sideboard. In, it's sideboard. In this there, yeah. I know I didn't talk about um, it, but. Yeah. And that gives some protection, I guess, because it makes everything indestructible. But yeah, like, definitely. It's definitely. I mean, you bring it in in that matchup for sure, but yeah. Um, even then, you still have to have it at the exact right time. And Not only that, <laughs> but you abs- they will play at selfless spirit, right? Yeah. Because selfless spirit will always die to bolt healing because yeah. your team doesn't pump it up. That's true. So man. unless you have two, yeah, and you protect one with the other, and that's yeah, uh, no, yeah, that it doesn't work. Um, that will so yeah. uh, there's that to say um, and of course uh, they can always well I was thinking they would uh, uh, bounce it with uh, they cryptic suck, but yeah. I'm just yeah. that's 8 mana you're already yeah, yeah, if, you're, you're, if you're doing you're that you're gone at that point um, regardless regardless yeah. uh, that is probably to me the best control matchup there yeah I think um, so yes so <laughs> Briefly, Kev, uh, yeah. collected company in this deck. Yeah. Um, so the reason I bring this up, like I said before, I've seen decks that run collected company instead of Aether Vial. And the reason being, Aether Vial is really good against that control matchup yeah. where you're able to play something, it's uncounterable, they just can't do anything about it. This right. deck already runs Cavern of Souls to kind of double up on that effect. Um, that way, it's basically shutting down control decks as yeah. best that it can. Yeah, um, and it, I mean, it's efficient. But it is one creature at a time per Aether Vial, where Collected Company has the advantage is if you get to that turn three or four, depending on if you have a Noble Hierarch or whatever, you can get two or three creatures off of the Collected Company, sure. making the ceiling a little bit higher, uh, as we like to say, um, but a little bit yeah. potentially less consistent and that you know you can just deal with the either the Collected Company mm-hmm. or the threats that come out mm-hmm. because you can counter it. You know what I mean? So, right. Um, I don't know which is better. I mean, I would probably lean towards Aether Vial, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, just because, like, the control matchup is going to be difficult with those sweepers, so at least you can get around the counters and just make right. those dead draws. Um, the, so, yeah. I can see, I mean, I can see for both sides. The yeah. reason I like Aether Vial more is that it's it's online turn one. That's true. Which is great. Um, I have to wait till turn four or three, like you said, mm-hmm. for um, um, my collecting company. Um, and I might already need to be cheating out humans. Yeah. Um, I might already need to have a threat with uh, champion, or I might need my meddling mage now, or or whatever it is. Mm-hmm. Um, so, to me, it is a more in your face play to play yeah. Aether Vial. Yeah. Um, it is definitely a high ceiling to have collective company, which is yeah. why I can see into their camp, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, grabbing two guys instead of one guy is pretty sweet. That's awesome. I'm not gonna lie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but and, you also don't know what those two guys are going to be. Exactly. There's some right. variance there. And right. so, like, it can be a lot better, but it can also be less consistent. So, it's in my mind, it's kind of like consistency versus yeah. power level. And mm-hmm. the risk of just being countered with the Collected Company just feels terrible, right? Right. <laughs> like, right. There's that, too. There's no way to protect. That being said, what is nice about Collected Company is it is instant speed. So, mm-hmm. if they tap out stuff. or something like that, you can... A well-timed Collected Company is on point but most of the yeah. time a control deck isn't going to give you that option at least yeah, they very shouldn't. rarely very rarely yeah if they do they then they're you. controlling wrong <laughs> well yeah <laughs> for the most part they're not doing it they're not doing it really right. at all um uh, yeah so just something to think about um yeah. i would i mean if you're building this deck try both sides see which one you like better. definitely um i also think knowing your meta your local meta is really important if you know nobody plays control i would go collecting company Hundred percent. Sure. Um, because the value is so much higher. Right. Yeah. Um, it definitely is. But like, if you're in a meta where control is like the popular deck, I would definitely run Aether Vial. I'd say if you're grinding a tournament, Aether Vial is the safest way to go. Yes. Um, it's the it's the cheaper, uh, more consistent play. Yeah. So Aether Vial is probably the best one. Um, and I I think most deck lists have kind of have played that out, and we see that. I think so now. Yeah. But even so. Fine card, collecting yeah, company. Yeah, definitely. You can play it. It's great. It'd be fine. Um, yeah, cool. Definitely a good deck. I would highly recommend if you are mm-hmm. looking to play great modern. Deck. A scary deck. And if it. you, 
Uh, if there's a matchup you think that Five Color Humans is disadvantaged in or has a hard time with, let us know. Yeah. Share it so we can figure out why, how, and try to beat it. I wish I had the cards to make Five Color Humans. Yeah, most of them. I don't have uh, Meddling Mage, and that's a big one, and the Hierarch. Yeah. Well, right. Right. Both of and which I'm are missing, essential. I think one Aether Vial. Uh, somebody wants to give me an Aether Vial. <laughs> um, I we can't beg for cards, Kev. All right, all right. You shouldn't give me an Aether Vial. All right. Did you? So, you yeah. better move on for it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys. Question of the week time. Uh, I'm gonna start off by saying we're not gonna be asking a question of the week this time. We are both right. Sorry. Yeah, uh, he's gonna be out of town. Yeah. I'm gonna be potentially moving, so there's a little bit of stuff going on there. So we just don't busy. have time to record the next episode with mm. the question being posted. So basically, we're doing it this way, where we're not gonna ask a question this time. There will be one next week. Don't worry. Um, but if that breaks your heart, I'm so sorry. Yeah, maybe you need to find different things in your life. Um, okay, so. <laughs> Don't come for our viewership like that, sir. I'll defend No, I'm just saying. Death. We're not worth it. Come on. Come on. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, all right. So, guys, uh, question of the week this past week was, what is your new favorite upcoming strategy or standard deck? Uh, something new and standard. There's a lot of good stuff going on. Somebody said an affinity list, which is the constructs list that we've kind of talked about. Constructs. Yeah. Um, whoop, whoop. You heard us talk about that last week, I believe. Yes. So you should know about that deck. If you don't, it's sweet. Um, Made by our very own really good. Parks. Oh, Parks. Oh, still Gotta still love him. kicking butt. Taking um, names. Dude, he's so good. Uh, somebody's really... The Kakusho Bro on Instagram said that they're really excited about White Black Knights, uh, which does look solid right now. Yeah. Um, the Knight Saga card, I can't think of the name of it. The one it's that really puts out good. two two knights with yeah. that one? That card's really good. And it good. gives all of the knights... Is it an emblem or till end of turn it gives it I think stuff? it's till end of turn, but that's the turn you win, so like it kind of doesn't matter. Um, sort of. It It's a good deck. It's really solid. Uh, from what it looks like, at least. I haven't seen it played, so... Um, the Return of Esper Approach... I think we talked about oh, this yeah. approach. Approach um, is still a premium yeah. win con in standard right now. Yeah. <clears throat> I say premium. There are tricky decks that play with it, but they all look really fun. Yeah, definitely. Like last week we talked about it. It was in three decks, I mm -hmm. think. Maybe two. At least two, if not three. Two. A hundred. I mean, it's yeah. a sweet card. Any really, card really that good. says do this and you win is a card that's worth playing and experimenting with. Yes. And approaches that Absolutely, yes. So, <laughs> so. Um, somebody just said red, black, aggro. That's cool. That's always what I draft. You, like, yeah. That's usually what I draft. There you so, go. I mean. <laughs> um, and the last one that I really liked, uh, mm. Saplings. Slimefoot is yeah. Is Saplings. Premium. Dude, Slimefoot's awesome. Saplings is a is fun. I love Saplings. I think Flavorful they're great. Um, we we've got some ones. some good cards for it. To be honest, I don't know if it's like tier one standard, but it's pretty solid. I I don't think it it is, and it doesn't run as many as you think it does. Um. It has the Lord, though. It's got, like, two Lords. Uh, it doesn't run one of them. I, I don't remember which one. There's, like, the big legendary one that spits out a bunch, and then there's the one that just gives all of them. I think that might be the one it doesn't run. Um, I think it just goes wide. I don't remember. I saw a list yeah. three weeks ago. Uh, I don't, like I don't know. I want to make oh, that list, cute. though, because I like Zappalese. No, you don't. You want to make uh, Mono Black Control. I, yeah, that's fair. <laughs> I love control. You do, and uh, you should play it with me in standard. Very safe. Guys, this might be the time I play standard. Let's go to that store that is controversial here in town and go kick their butt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, speaking of stores in town, guys, we have our crack it back. Sponsored by Grand Slam Grand Comics Slam. and Collectibles. That uh, was highly effective. Yeah. Did you see that? Yeah. <laughs> that was Good. awesome. Um, if you have not, if you're in the Rock Hill area, you should really check them out. They are awesome. Yeah. They do a lot for us. Uh, we cannot thank them enough. Yeah. Their link is in the description if you're interested. Join their Facebook group and hang out with them. Yeah. They're um, a cool bunch. Uh, yes. Really ambitious store. So they're doing a lot right now. Yeah. We're uh, super really super happy to work with them and yeah. uh, just be involved. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so we do have our gold cards. What is yours? I uh, Glint the the Steely Champion. I almost said Glint Sleeves Life. I don't know why. <laughs> Steely Champion. What are you talking about there? <laughs> I I have Squee and I did get a double rare pack, but I didn't no get Squee though. Um, I got Varix Blade Wing as a foil. 
uh, rare or mythic, excuse me. That's a hundred percent my pick. <laughs> that card's amazing. Do what you? The oh dragon God, that spits yes. out oh. another dragon. Oh, <laughs> Lord? Yes. For four. It's a four four flying with kicker three. Yeah. When it enters the battlefield, if it was kicked, put another four four dragon with flying onto the battlefield. <laughs> yeah. Field, excuse me. Oh, it's awesome. Awesome. Super good. Yeah. Um, and definitely the pick. Yes, I would say so. I, There's no doubt that that's my pick. No, yeah, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about that in constructed stuff, but um, that I remember Glory actually, is still in standard. So there is a deck though that does run this. <laughs> it still runs Glory Bringer, but it's yeah. like Gruel Beat Face, something like that. Yeah. It's awesome. So I got Rite of Bells and Lock. Bells. Yeah, I said that right. Uh, <laughs> it's an interesting one. Uh, it's a saga. Uh, it's first two modes create two O one Black Cleric creature tokens. Black Cleric Creature Tokens. That's the name of my uh, ska band. Uh, and then it's third mode. Create a 6-6 six, six Black Demon Creature Token with Flying, Trample, and at the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice another creature if you can't. This creature deals 6 damage to you. Um, I don't know if that's necessarily it, but that's a really good card. I would definitely pick that, I think. Um, I don't if really not have just any to other. Try it. I don't have any other ones. I mean, I have Rona, Disciple of Gix, but that's not... Not that exciting, honestly. You have Divination? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, turn one divination. Never first pick divination. No. Um, <laughs> Unless your pack is just garbage, then sure, go for it. Uh, there would be a card better than divination. I, I would you. definitely hope so. <laughs> like if we t hold on, if we take out <laughs> right of bells and lock. Yeah. Um. Journey Mage, maybe. I mean, I'm already gone with bodyguards. Fine. Bodyguards, fine. I would honestly pick Rona above it. I think. Probably. I don't, I mean, I don't really like Rona Unlimited, but I would I don't probably either. try um, it. Uh, I wouldn't first pick Cyclops, but a 4-4 four, four on 4 is yeah, not bad on curve. So. My 4-4 four, four on 4 is better. Yes, it is, Kevin. <laughs> but mine is uh, a demon uh, for 6. Like Grr. I like Rite of Bells a lot. I would take that. Yeah, I would take it as well. Um, and not Divination ever. <laughs> uh, thank you again to Grand Slam for sponsoring yes. that. Um, still on the hunt for our gold cards. You still owe me a pie in the face. Kevin, I want you to know I feel really bad about not hitting you in the face. With the I am sure you do. And I'm so um, sorry. With the move and everything, we just haven't had time. It's going to happen. Don't worry. If you're really banking on that, it will happen. It will. It Message us, will. and we'll send you a private video. Send us... The cut version. The cut. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying stuff at this point. No, we won't. Uh. Uh, guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode of the podcast. If you did, make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. Mm -hmm. Make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our content, mm -hmm. of which there's a lot coming out right now. Oh, a way. ton. Just um, heaps. With some plans for some new stuff coming out. Uh, so if you... Mm -hmm. In particular, if you did not see our modern video of Death Shadow versus Eldrazi Tron, you yeah. should really go watch that. It was that, really fun to make, would you say? Yeah. A uh, lot of work, a lot of fun. Uh, definitely the most ambitious project I think we've ever had in terms of yeah. produced video. Um, it was the only other time we've had someone else here specifically yeah, for filming. Just to film and help us out. So um, really, really a big project, but something we'd like to do more of in the future. Mm -hmm. Because it's so much work, we're probably not going to do, like, it's not going to be a weekly thing by any means, God but damn. it might be, like, once a month, once every two months, something like that. Who knows? They'll be, um, they'll be there. It'll be there. That's if something you like that stay we want to do. It was kind of a, it's a different take on the um, gameplay videos. Yeah. You know? Um, definitely inspired by Game Nights. There's, I mean, clearly. Yes, but... we but... took a different route with it. Yeah. Um, and we didn't want to copy them by any means because they are amazing at what they do. There's no way yeah. we could copy that. So, <laughs> not even gonna try. But, yeah. uh, we did take our own direction with it, but still tried to make it a little bit more produced. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. It seems like you guys really did because the view counts up on it and the comments are fantastic. So... Thanks for that. Warms the cockles of my heart. On that note... <laughs> Guys, I hope you enjoyed this episode. We're going to get out of here. My name is Kevin. My name is Will. Where do you think the cockles are? This has been It Resolves. This has been It Resolves. This has been It Resolves.